Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We begin with a retry of the capture of this particular supply vessel carrying food, water, and oxygen for our Kerbals around Mars. And last time we tried to capture, but we were too high in the atmosphere, so it failed to actually capture around Mars. Uh, I moved it down a little bit, but this time too, it's not going to work out quite right. Uh, it is not low enough, just barely. It makes a good effort of it, but we had to reload the save again. So just full disclosure, I had quick saved when entering Mars Sphere of Influence with this, and we had to reload it twice. This time I got it well enough, uh, so the height, the apoapsis height, uh, was good enough for it to be serviceable, but it's really touchy. I like one kilometer difference in the altitude for the capture uh, makes a huge difference. It could be between capturing and getting into this orbit you see here. And then of course one kilometer further and you'll be crashing into the surface. So it's tough sometimes. But anyway, we jettison the heat shield, the inflatable heat shield, and then we adjust our altitude. Uh, our periapsis was still in the atmosphere, so we have to boost up to get the periapsis clear of the atmosphere so we don't hit it again. And we also needed to do an inclination change to line up with other things. I think we were mainly trying to get to Phobian Portal here, but we are running out of fuel here with our corrections. I do the best I can to make sure that it's in a good position. And then I went to the Phobian Portal, our Phobos station, and there was this a set of two Briz stages connected to each other as a tug. And I decided to separate it off from the station. It had been used to bring modules to there. And now it can be used to pull our little wayward supply vessel in. What you see here is the outer drop tanks, the toroidal tanks being dumped. They're sort of core tanks on the Briz stages and then the toroidal tanks around them to expand their abilities uh, expand their burn time to like one hour though I cheated I put extra Briz engines on these stages so here we have two Briz cores stacked on top of each other and of course the big docking port on top and here we are making the rendezvous with the supply vessel that we needed to get to uh, it has plenty of Delta V on its own this little stack of Briz stages but once it connects to its target is it gonna have enough that's the question so the supply vessel is doing most of the docking. The Briz is not meant for docking, so it doesn't have RCS thrusters in the right place. So we have the supply vessel due to docking. And when they connect up, we see that, well, it doesn't have a whole lot of Delta V. Now we use what we can to get into a better position, but it's not gonna be enough. So anyway, uh, this does a burn to help things out, but we're going to need more help. But before we do that, we have to turn to another arrival, another supply vessel in fact, identical to that one you saw there. And so this is a backup. There, there were many backups. I thought that hitting the same altitude should work just fine as far as trying to capture. It turns out not so much because I guess this was arriving at a different speed. So we needed to use some of our Delta V to slow down even more. And so that took a bit of time. Eventually, though, we did capture using our engines. And you see the apoapsis going down there. And now I aimed to get into a better position for further help. Obviously, this will not be able to get to Phobos either. But this can. This is the supply vessel that was launched by the Monument Launcher, and it has lots of fuel. It is also huge, so I'll have no problem pushing around the other vessels. So it has a Raptor vacuum engine on the bottom, lots of methane and oxygen in uh, presumably very well therm thermally insulated tanks. And we started the uh, capture here. The other two supply vessels were just in case this didn't work. And it's looking like it's working. And in fact, it is now in the midst of the rendezvous with one of those supply vessels. So you can see the little supply vessel down there and the big one coming to meet up with it to help it get in. Now fortunately I had an idea that this might happen so I put docking ports at both ends of these supply vessels so they could link together so uh, we have a docking port free still on the opposite end. I forgot to turn off the little one's own engines so need to switch those off. 
and what we're doing now is getting to the other one, the one that has the Briz stage connected to it, or the Briz stages. There were two of them stacked together. But anyway, uh, there it is. We are just trying to get over to it. Takes a lot of Delta V though. Um, I was a little bit worried that even with the huge amount of Delta V, monumental amount of Delta V that this has, if you will, that we would somehow end up not having enough. But anyway, here we are docking to the other one. And there we go. All right, and then the bridge stages are done, or it's really just one stage. It has one set of engines. It's just two tanks connected to it. Anyway, so it can uh, retro burn and get itself down to a disposal altitude. Unfortunately, because we're doing it at our periapsis, this didn't have enough delta V to actually get back down into the atmosphere. That was my mistake. We should have waited until apoapsis for this burn, but I did not. I was impatient. After all, we've got this huge thing to deal with, so I have a reason to be impatient. Now, much lighter than when the big monument supply vessel entered Mars SOI, but we made it over to Phobos just fine. Uh, in fact, we are already in Phobos orbit there, and the lag is immense as we approach the station, which already has a lot of stuff docked to it, and this is not going to make things any easier. Uh, you can see the contraption over there, and this slowly making its way over, and docking. I just decided to dock them all together like this, instead of me putting them on separate ports. So that would have been neater, I think. I forget if I rearranged them later. Okay, it's a delicate thing. These are huge objects to have to dock together. And is Kerbal going to accept this? Can we dock such things? There we go. All right. It's it's uh, quite quite a thing. It's quite a thing right there. But we have a lot more supplies now. So these 11 crew members on this, currently called my lab, are good to go for an extended period of time. So we turn to the International Space Station where they needed more supplies. So I cleared out one of the supply vessels, moved it off, and of course I deorbited it, but not before getting some uh, cool shots of it uh, leaving the station. As you see here, I decided to drop the HUD and get some, some views of the station as we departed. It was a long burn to deorbit, and it just had RCS thrusters to use, so it took some time. And we'll just send another one up was the idea, but then people talked about certain Vulcan ideas involving a cluster of Vulcan cores. And so I had to make the supply vessel bigger to justify this. And ultimately we had a very Kerbal sort of Vulcan assemblage. Uh, a Vulcan core with six other Vulcan cores around it. There's the the ULA Vulcan rocket, obviously, not the old Soviet Vulcan rocket. So that's, uh, what, total of 14 BE-4 engines that need to be delivered. And up it goes really slowly. There is full cross-feeding. In other words, two of them are feeding into all the rest and will separate first, as we will see here. So this is really Kerbal. This is the old Kerbal asparagus staging sort of style. Uh, real throwback here. Really the best way to use Falcon cores, frankly. Basically they're just really big orange tanks, I think, effectively speaking. So anyway, four of them and then the next two go off. And now we're now we're a uh, Vulcan heavy. I, I don't I you know we could call it super heavy or ultra heavy or whatever. I think we should just call it Vulcan Kerbal. I mean, the, the, the whole cluster uh, with a total of seven cores, that's a Vulcan Kerbal. When you have seven cores of anything, that's, that's automatically a Kerbal, I think. That's what we should call it. So, yeah. Okay, fairing separation. And so, yeah, an extra big supply vessel, thankfully. Uh, this one, I think, was around 88 tons, but it's got fuel, additional fuel so that I can complete orbit here. We will deorbit the core there so that it doesn't hang out in orbit. Off it goes, and so we put some little engines on here so it can finish up orbit and rendezvous with the station and everything. But yeah, fairly heavy. And 
and so our International Space Station crew will not have to ask for supplies for a while. But I'm not too sure if I'll ever launch the Vulcan Kerbal again. Um, yeah. That might be a one-time only thing, we'll see. So here are the approach, lining up with the docking port. And still lining up with the docking port. Hey, I put the International Space Station together for a reason. I wanted these views. So in it goes. You can see, uh, much larger than the previous one. A humongous sort of supply vessel. And there it goes. All right. So yes, we have our supplies. But I wanted to make sure that we were totally supplied for an extended period of time because our Outer Planets missions to Saturn and Uranus are arriving. And so I wanted to focus on them. And so we are launching to Lunar Gateway with this Energia rocket carrying more supplies. Well, Energia with the Vesuvius upper stage here. And so off it goes, launching from Cape Canaveral as we do. So with this supply vessel deployed, I, it was my hope that we would be able to focus on the Saturn and Uranus missions. And we will get to them at the end of this video. So there it goes. I've been thinking of coming up with a rocket that could replace the Energia because it's a bit overused at this point. We've used it a lot in this series. And I ought to have one of my own designs doing this sort of work here. Uh, we'll think about that. Anyway, separation of the fairings, and we have a modified HTV carrying the supplies for Lunar Gateway. As we have multiple times, highly modified considering it has three AJ-10-190 engines at the bottom of it. Okay, that is the core separating so that it deorbits properly. And we continue with the RD-57M. And it proceeds on to the moon. I'll try and expedite this. We've seen this sort of thing before many times during the series. Very simple, straightforward thing that we've done a lot. While it was on its way though, we had to take a look at our Uranus return vessel. That's that part up there. Uh, the rest of it was actually a transfer stage. And the transfer stage still has fuel because actually if you exit the Earth system really fast, it gets really cold very quickly. And so it still had some of its fuel. But anyway, we made sure that it was properly aiming at the right location around Uranus to capture and turn back to this, the supply vessel for a lunar gateway. And so we'll meet up again with the Uranus return vessel later on. That's to bring... Mikko Gagozov is the only one who's gone to Uranus. And he's actually not arrived yet. The return vessel arrived first, so we'll have that ready to go before he arrives. Anyway, here the supply vessel is meeting up with Lunar Gateway. And that is the approach. And it is a very sort of awkward thing. It took a lot of burns as usual, but that's why we had three of the AG-10-190 engines at the bottom there. And yeah, I sort of like how all my stations are haphazard collections of things. Uh, that's actually fun. But anyway, that's the old supply vessel going off and the new one sliding in. Uh, from Lunar Gateway's height, it's relatively easy to deorbit the old supply vessels because it's got the, a fairly low periapsis, about 50 kilometers. So just a tiny nudge in the right direction will do the trick for that. And this one gets in and that will leave us all set for the missions that I really want to pay attention to. Of course, again, the main struggle in this whole business is to make sure all our Kerbals are supplied while we place them where they wanted to be placed. So here's the Saturn supply vessel, speaking of which, arriving before the people, the Kerbals who are going to be arriving at Saturn. So the supply vessels get there first. And these are the two Kerbals who will be benefiting from those supplies, that little route and Mr. Doobie, who are also approaching Saturn but not quite in the sphere of influence yet. This is a return vessel around Uranus, actually in Uranus SOI finally, and it will need to capture. Uh, we've got still some fuel in the transfer stage in order to start it off, but we have to use that pretty quickly because the main engine on the return vessel is an Attila thruster, which is an augmented arc jet, much better than an ion engine, but still it takes some time to do its burns. So we had to get to it. And there goes the, the previous stage, the huge hydrogen nuclear stage. And our Attila Thruster augmented arc jet 
captures us safely into orbit around Uranus. Uh, Mikko had wanted to go to Miranda, the inner moon of Uranus, so that's going to take some doing. Uh, those inner moons are really hard to get to. But we'll see uh, when he gets in how we manage that. So anyway, a view of the return vessel already in orbit around Uranus. And then we get to turn to Saturn things. And here is the Saturn supply vessel making orbit around Saturn. It's using ion engines, which takes a lot of time. And so even though it looks like no engines or sounds like there's no engines burning, they are on. It's just that we can use the ion engines during time warp, thanks to KSB Interstellar. And it only has one set. That's 10 ion engines altogether. So at periapsis, I supplement with these little Gemini lander engines. They're hypergolic engines uh, with storable fuels that uh, we could use. But they weren't enough, really. We pass by periapsis. We can't keep them on indefinitely. They don't have that much fuel. Uh, also, they were pretty slow anyway. We didn't actually use that much of the Arizona NTO up there. So we continue with the ion engine and ion engine set. And it did finally capture us. We don't have a huge amount of Delta V to work with, but we have some. Anyway, so it rounded out that orbit, making it easier for our other arrivals to access it. And speaking of other arrivals, here are Lila Root and Mr. Doobie finally arriving at Saturn with its rings blinking for some reason. As if welcoming them, I guess. It's like a welcome sign with the rings blinking. I don't know why it does that or how that works, but uh, I can tell you that in 3x physical time warp it stops, but during regular time warp it doesn't. Anyway, so yes, the ring's blinking and they start to slow down. This, the engines are running here, the ion engines. They are also using ion engines. And yeah, it takes a while, but we did have the experience with the supply vessel already, so I do a little bit better, I think. And here the orbit gets made. That's the orbit. And so we will ultimately try and rendezvous them with the supply vessel because they have a limited amount of water. We have to keep checking in on them to make sure the recycling worked all right. Uh, it looks like Miracore is going to need supplies. Anyway, but we'll save all that for the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.